Well, good morning. I do want to formally introduce myself um, for those of you that I have not met yet. My name is Elizabeth Dotrieve, and I am the new CEO for the St. Bernard Chamber of Commerce. I started in mid-March, um, and I'm very excited to be here. I come from the hospitality industry with a background in events. We also have a new member to our team, Jessie eisner Clyle. She's in the back. She's the one that checked you guys all in. Um, and she is our new mar marketing and operations manager. So now that we have a full team, we are very excited um, to put on some great events for you guys this year. Um, so just to highlight a few, I do want to mention a few events that we have coming up. So we have our annual gala that's going to be on August 10th. That is a change. It used to be in December, so mark your calendars that it's moving to August this year. Um, and then we have our business expo is making a comeback, and that is going to be on September 5th. Blues, Brews, and Barbecue will be on October 5th, and then Tour de Parish is on November 2nd. But if you didn't get all that, no worries. We're going to send out um, email blasts as well as watch our Facebook for all the information on our upcoming events. So make sure you. Uh, Get us out of your spam filter, look at all, make sure you're getting the emails and if you're not, let us know and uh, we'll get you all set up. So at this time, I do want to highlight our newest business advocate sponsor. We have EMR, they're Southern Recycling, they're a metal and scrap recycling facility. They're based out of New Orleans on Florida Avenue and we are very excited to have them um, as a partner with the chamber and we look forward to working with them. We also have a bunch of new members that have joined since March, and so we want to highlight them and welcome them to the chamber. We have Fast Signs, Metairie Lakeside, Be Thankful for Something, Schmelly's Dirt Farm, Breathing Waters, The Parish Kayaks, also known as Kayakity Yak, Rexford Consulting, Public Service Commissioner Eric Schermet, Girls Gone Buff, Redfish World Series, LLC, <laughs> Printing Plus, New York Life, Marco Vaccarella, and R.H. Sweeney Associates. So welcome to all of you to the chamber. We are very excited that you have joined and look forward to working with all of you. And I do want to also thank our food partners for today. The food that you're eating was provided by Crave. Um, Araby Food Store and the Coffee House. So thank you all for providing a wonderful meal for us today. And before Katie comes up here, we're going to have President Guy come up and uh, introduce a few of our elected officials. The sheriff must have known that I was going to introduce all the elected officials. And last year, if you remember, I, I forgot to announce him. And last night we were at a fundraiser, and he says, Guy, tomorrow, don't forget to announce me if you do the elected officials. <laughs> Go figure. Last night, and not like this morning. But uh, uh, first of all, thank all of you for coming. Elizabeth, great job. We have a great turnout here today, and you're doing a doing a wonderful job for our parish and everything you do. And Mindy, where are you? Thank you so much for what you do for the chamber. And thank you for having this event. Uh, I wanna, you know, good things are happening in St. Bernard Parish, and that, just, that doesn't happen by accident. So I wanna introduce all of the elected officials here um, today because they are so important to our success. First, our sheriff, Jimmy Pullman. A Lieutenant Governor, Billy Nagasa, thank you for coming. <laughs> Such a friend for St. Bernard Parish. Thank you for everything you do, Lieutenant Governor. School Board Member, Diana Dysart. <laughs> Judge of the Fourth Circuit, Danny Dysart. <laughs> School Board Member, Catherine Lemoyne. <laughs> That's you. Council Member, Kerry Calais. <laughs> Council Member, Wanda Alcon. <laughs> Council Member, Gillis McCluskey. <laughs> School Board Member, Sean Warner. <laughs> Former Council Member, Police Juror, Gus Reese. 
former, and I, I never know what to put behind this thing, you know, former police juror, council member, port commission member now, RPC member, Charlie Ponstein. <laughs> former council member, Joey DeFata. Thank all of you guys for coming today. Thank you, President McGinnis, and thank all of you for coming out here today. My name is Katie Tomasio. I'm the Director of Tourism and Film for St. Bernard Parish Government. I'm also a board member for the St. Bernard Parish Chamber of Commerce. The word tourism is related to the conception of the Grand Tour introduced in the 17th century. The idea was that Europe's aristocrats made a tour around the continent in order to see and experience other cultures for education and pleasure. Today, tourism is a global sensation, an economic driver that will only continue to grow. Tourism is an important factor to the wealth of the United States, the great state of Louisiana, and to all local communities. Tourism works, tourism matters. Thanks to the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, and to the University of New Orleans, our 2018 hospitality numbers are in. In 2017, tourism spending in St. Bernard Parish generated $2.82 million to our local taxes. And I am excited, thank you. And I am excited to announce today that in 2018, tourism generated $3.23 million to our local taxes. That is a 15% increase. Tourism is truly terrific. The success is due to great partnerships with all of you here today, from conventions to events to fairs, festivals, museums, everyone in this room. You all care about tourism and tourism truly matters. Our Lieutenant Governor, our Parish President, our Council Administration, you all make tourism truly unique and what it is. And where else can you go where everybody just gets along? We truly have St. Bernard Parish pride. Right now, I'd like to show you a brief video before um, I announce Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, so. Feed your soul and discover Louisiana's southeastern sportsman paradise. Savor all the seasons of plentiful seafood, flaunt your festival style, shop and play like a local, and discover historic St. Bernard. Whether your passion is art, culture, food, music, history, or recreation, discover your true passion in the parish. Downriver, along the mighty Mississippi, St. Bernard is located five miles from the French Quarter. Begin your adventure in the Old Araby Cultural District, gateway to the San Bernardo Scenic Byway. Enjoy historic sites of plantations and live oaks, and travel to the end of the world where the road ends and the adventure begins. St. Bernard Parish is boasting with top schools, safe communities, world-class recreational facilities, and attractions. Live the culture of the Los Islanos. Stay a night and make a splash at the St. Bernard State Park. Travel back in time where the Battle of New Orleans was fought and won at the Shelmet National Park Battlefield. Whether your passion is world-class fishing or tasting the finest seafood along the Gulf Coast, enjoy St. Bernard Parish. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank the St. Bernard Tourist Commission because without our board members, the office, they, they, we just have such a great partnership and they truly help us. We work together to promote and market to make St. Bernard the premier parish of the great state of Louisiana. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Billy Nungesser. Mr. Nungesser joins us today as the 54th Lieutenant Governor of the State of Louisiana. He is also the incoming chairman of the National Lieutenant Governors Association, where he continues to keep Louisiana in the spotlight on a national stage. Since taking office in 2016, tourism numbers have flourished year after year, despite both budget and staff cuts. Prior to this position, as head of the state's Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, he was the president of Plaquemines Parish from 2006 to 2014. Nungesser knows the spotlight well from the role he played in securing hurricane relief funds for Plaquemines Parish and is the voice of frustration after the BP oil spill. 
As a result of his hard work and dedication during those troubling times, he has been coined the hardest working man in Louisiana by the national media. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce my friend and our Lieutenant Governor, the Ambassador for Louisiana, Billy Nungesser. Thank you, Katie. Good morning. And I, I too need to give a shout out to the sheriff and, and the law enforcement because without the great work he does and, and his team, uh, St. Bernard, North Louisiana would be safe for people to come here. So Sheriff, thank you. I appreciate all you do. I, uh, and, and Katie, thank you. It, it's an easy job in Louisiana uh, to promote tourism with so many passionate people that love their city, their town, and Katie and your team do, do an incredible job. And um, there's several reasons I can never tell her no when she calls me to sponsor or host an event in St. Bernard. But the biggest reason is nowhere else in the state did I get more votes uh, than in St. Bernard. I got more votes in St. Bernard than Plaquemines Parish. And I will never forget that. So, um, yeah, I'll share with you two quick stories and then we'll go through a quick PowerPoint. Um, I'm sure everybody by now has seen the picture of the Trump socks. So I had gotten those socks from Joe Dager about two years ago. And I showed them to the president backstage at an event two years ago and he made me go out on stage and show everybody. So I know he likes seeing his picture on the socks. Well, when he got off the plane and walked up to me, I said, Mr. President, uh, I know you like to tweet. And Sunday night, we got a local guy in the American Idol, and we could use a little help if you could tweet out the vote for Lane Hardy. And I said, before you answer me, we're up against New York and California, and in case you don't remember, neither of those states voted for you. <laughs> so how about a little help? He said, Billy, I'll see what I can do. I said, well, look, by the way, let me show you my socks. And he grabbed my leg and made sure the press saw it. And that, that uh, picture was viewed by 500 million people around the world. Incredible. Uh, Sydney, we should have we tagged that with an ad. It was worth over $3 million. So great opportunity. Also, in June, we will be bringing all the Republican lieutenant governors to New Orleans. And two years ago, uh, three years ago when I won, I was a guest speaker in Austin. And the lieutenant governor there gave us all these great cowboy boots with our state seal. Incredible. Uh, had to cost several hundred dollars. Well, when I got up to speak, I said, uh, man, look, I want to thank the lieutenant governor for these boots. It's incredible. I know y'all always do things bigger in Texas. And next year, in a couple of years, y'all are coming to New Orleans. And I said, we don't have quite as big a budget. So y'all each get a pair of white shrimp boots and a Sharpie, and you can write your own name on them. <laughs> And, and those boots came in this week, and we will be giving those out in New Orleans. So they will remember Louisiana in the white shrimp boots. So I know we're running a little behind, so I'm going to run through some of these pretty quickly. We all know the departments under Lieutenant Governor. What happens year after year is the legislature cuts things out of the budget that don't get a lot of pushback. Uh, several years ago, the arts in Louisiana would get funded to the tune of four or five million dollars. It's been zeroed out. Every year we take a million to a million and a half dollars of tourism money and we fund arts programs for every parish in the state. And with that we get a lot of matching federal money and I just cannot not walk away from that federal money. Um, but all of these departments are subsidized because of budget cuts over the years with tourism dollars, which gives us less money to promote the state and that's why we have to get so creative. So hopefully one day uh, we can get back to where we're funding services to the blind, which we fund with tourism money through the libraries, providing internet service to every parish at library in all over the state is done through my office, and we have to move tourism money to do those things. But those are critical things. They're little things, but they really matter to communities all over the state, and we're gonna continue to do that um, simply because uh, they're so important to those communities. Now, everywhere I go, people ask me for the last three years around the state, 
so Billy, I never see you advertise in Louisiana. Well, that's because you're already here. So I thought I'd share with you this morning three of the 30 second spots that we use through social media around the country to lure people to our website to book a trip to Louisiana. And the great thing about these commercials, we change them up in different markets and we can see which ones are working and not working. And what we try to do, while you can do all these things in these commercials anywhere, they're just a little bit different uh, and special here in Louisiana. This is a ticket stub. You'd normally toss it out, but not today. Today, you're in Louisiana. Today, you took a face-flattening high-octane airboat through the marsh and ended up back in the time of dinosaurs. Today, you savored seafood that hadn't crossed state lines. Today, you danced till your soul felt good and your souls ached. That ticket stub, you tuck it away as a reminder, because today, you're in Louisiana. This is a shrimp po' boy. It could just be a sandwich, but today, you're in Louisiana. Today, you got up with the sun to enjoy the best bass fishing on earth. Today, you walked historic calls where ghosts might pay a visit, but spirits are always present. Today, you wandered into a hole in the wall cafe and fed your soul with a frosty local brew and this shrimp po' boy. Anywhere else, it's just a sandwich, but today, you're in Louisiana. This is a hat. You can get one anywhere, but today you're in Louisiana. You forgot your favorite one at home, of course, so you got this one and some change. You gave some of that change to the band who got your two left feet to dance, and a few dollars to a man who typed up a poem just for you. You saved the rest for a dozen fresh oysters in a Sazerac, one to feed your face, the other to feed your soul. The hat, it's your new favorite, because today you're in Louisiana. So we use those across the country uh, to drive people to our website. And, and everybody said, I didn't see a redfish or a trout in there. Um, we have those too. We just change them up to different markets and um, see where they work best to get people to come uh, to Louisiana. So this, this past year, we had a record breaking year in tourism. Not only did we set a new record, but usually we see a one, two, 3% increase we had a 9% increase in tourism from 2017 to 2018. 51.3 million people came to Louisiana, uh, broke the 50 million mark. Incredible numbers for a state our size. Um, we saw that 9% increase and they spent $18.8 .8 billion and left behind 1.9 billion in taxes that we didn't have to pay. Incredible opportunity for us, and we're just getting there on the international market. With the new direct flights into New Orleans and the ability for us to draw those international visitors, uh, we saw a 37% increase uh, last year in international visitors. And that number has not even started to uh, show what, we can, what we're capable of. One thing we did this year is we went to China. And China's a little difficult market because you really can't advertise there. Uh, but they said if we went to this international summit, uh, tourism summit, that they would send writers and bloggers to Louisiana um, and show their appreciation. And they did. We've had over 30 writers and bloggers here going all over Louisiana, writing about the food, the music, and why Chinese should travel to America. Now to give you an idea of the value of the Chinese market, First off, they spend more money than any international travel, $6,900 a person. In Shanghai alone, where we met with all the travel agents and people that book trips to America, they issue 4,000 visas a day, one city. By 2020, 240 million Chinese will come to America. Now, I can't even wrap my arms around that kind of market uh, for Louisiana and the money they spend when they come here. And they don't just go to one city or one state, uh, they see three or four states. Now their first trip usually is to California, New York, Las Vegas, but their second trip they're looking for a new experience and that's where Louisiana is a great opportunity. We also know the Chinese love to go where movies were shot. 
So we unveiled in China our new Lights, Camera, Louisiana movie trail. Uh, we know people want to go where movies were shot and where people were shot, like Bonnie and Clyde, right here in Louisiana. So it's a great opportunity for us to highlight those films and to take advantage of the film industry in Louisiana. Last year, in the last special session, when they had two bills to kill the tax credit for the movie industry, it was lucky timing that we came out with a study that we did uh, for our knowledge to know what does the film industry mean to tourism? What is the value? And we found that 9% of everyone that comes to Louisiana comes here because of a movie or TV show that draws them to Louisiana. That's a little over 5 million people, a $1.3 billion economic impact. When we gave that study to the legislators, it quickly killed both of those bills that were going to do away with the tax credits for the movie industry. And we will keep doing that study every year to keep showing that value. Now, two things we want to encourage the movie industry to do. One, we would love for them, when they're filming in your city, your town, to make sure they identify with that city on a bridge, on a bus, on a water tower. So when people see that show or that movie, they want to go there. And the second thing we want them to do is we want to leave behind an artifact, something that we can put in a museum one day about the movie industry in Louisiana. The first Tarzan movie was filmed in Morgan City 100 years ago. First movie to gross a million dollars. It wouldn't even make it today, but uh, that was a big deal back then. And then Steel Magnolia put Natchitoches on the map, and this is the 30th year anniversary. Uh, they'll be showing that movie in Natchitoches, people coming from all over the world for that premiere uh, in that city, that people continue to go there because of that movie. So we really got a great opportunity to help grow our movie industry and make sure the legislators realize the importance of that to the tourism industry. Now, every year, maybe you can help me, there you go. Every year we have the seafood cook-off and we take chefs from all over Louisiana and we moved it from New Orleans to Lafayette to give chefs from all over the state a shorter distance to travel. And um, last year, uh, Ryan Trahan won that award in Lafayette, Blue Dog Cafe, and then he competed in New Orleans for the restaurant show. And for the first time in seven years, he brought that award back to Louisiana. It's kind of tough when we lose a seafood award to Alaska two years in a row, and then we had lost to Mississippi. Uh, but that didn't count because they use Louisiana shrimp. But this is an opportunity for us to take a local chef, and if you don't have a chef in this competition, you need to get one. Because when they win this crown, they travel all around the country with restaurant takeovers, promoting Louisiana seafood, and they want to go where that chef's from. Because they not only cook good, they got personality, and they, got, they have that passion, and people want to travel. Uh, Bonnie Bro won two years ago. People come from all over the country to go to her restaurant uh, in Bro Bridge. She opened her own restaurant because of the publicity she got as queen of seafood. So if you don't have a chef in this year, please uh, find somebody that wants to enter. Now every year we have a little fun and we pardon a crawfish. Uh, we take one crawfish out the Atchafalaya Basin and we, we, we pardon it. Uh, two years ago we named it Emil after Emil Zadaran. Uh, who started that crawfish ball a hundred years ago and we have a lot of fun with this and we got a lot of free publicity I got invited to the White House last year a uh, year before last with five other lieutenant governors and when the president and vice president walked out I walked up to the vice president Mr. Vice President Thanksgiving's right around the corner and I know y'all get to pardon the turkeys and Billy let me tell you that's a big deal one turkey we clean it up it spends a night at the mansion here it, it travels around the White House and has the run of the class. I know the story, Mr. Vice President. So let me tell you something. Back in Louisiana, first Tuesday after Mardi Gras, one lucky crawfish out there at Line Basin. We take it to New Orleans, we pardon it, we let it go in a state park while the rest of his family gets balled alive. <laughs> he, look, he looked at me and he said, son, what the hell are you talking about? I said, have a good day, Mr. Vice President. And, and when he came in to visit with the pastors of those churches that had uh, burned a while back, I said, we still pardoned that crawfish. He just shook his head. So he remembered. 
We have a lot of fun with that. We get a lot of free publicity and it kicks off coffee season. No one else can do anywhere else in the world. Now, we started the, the, the foundation. We got passed in the legislature two years ago, the Culture Recreation Tourism Foundation. Unbelievable opportunity for some of our young entrepreneurs and business people that want to get involved in making some money and helping us make our state parks not only the best they can be, but relieve that tax burden of running the state parks off the taxpayers. This is a resort conference center in, in West Virginia. In six years in the state park, this facility brought in $50 million to the park system. We are going out for bid in the next 30 days, or pr proposal, for someone to build one of these on the lake next to Fountain Blue State Park. We'll give them the land, give us a percentage of gross sales, we'll do a 99-year lease, and we will make millions of dollars for the Cultural Recreation Tourist Foundation. I believe we'll see a day where we'll not only not need tax dollars to run our state parks, they will generate millions of dollars that we can give out local grants for cultural recreation tourism, uh, things that will never get funded out of the legislature we can do out of this foundation. And the reason we had to create the foundation is so the money can never be swept by the legislature. Now, it doesn't have to be a big resort. We let a gentleman move his horseback operation into Bogachitta in Washington Parish. We get $2 a half day, $4 a whole day. He charges 30 and 50 bucks. He makes a lot of money, but he's got to feed them. We just filmed a national TV show about horseback riding in Louisiana State Parks. It is turning that parish around. People are coming from all over to horseback ride, but they're shopping in Washington Parish, eating in the restaurants, and it has been a boom for that area. If you know somebody that has an interest that wants to do something in the park, maybe they want to build some luxury cabins. We'll put them in our rental program. We'll split 80-20. They'll make a bunch of money. We'll have another service, something that we can do. Some people are looking at lazy rivers. Uh, anything that will benefit your community, bring people into the park, and makes good sense. One thing we won't do, we won't allow a business to come into your community in the state park that will hurt a local business or company. We will vet it with the Chamber, the Tourism, the local elected officials, and we'll make sure that it's a win-win for everybody. So if you've got some ideas or thoughts, uh, let us know. We're in the process of setting up a website so you can go on into the state park site and look at all the properties in the state. We've got properties we didn't even know we owned uh, with a lake, with woods, and great opportunity for people to, uh, to do some developments and not have to come out of pocket with cash. So I wanted to mention this program. As you know, the arts is under my office. About two years ago, I went to California to speak to the endowment for the national arts and talked about the suicide rate. Uh, we have one of the highest for veterans in Louisiana. They gave us a grant, Art Therapy for Veterans. Um, we got a Louisiana songwriter, a therapist, and, and we got 12 vets that are, are struggling with, um, with what they saw in war and, and coming home. And we get them in a room, <clears throat> and they put all that pain down in writing. And that songwriter puts together a song. Um, we're on our third group. The first group in Lake Charles, the song was so good, they're going to record it in Nashville. But when you see the interview for these veterans, that they now can pull up their phone when they're having a problem and know, play that song, and know they had a part in creating something beautiful with their pain, the reward is incredible. Um, and I wanted to share that with you today. We've got a great team working on that. The next one is in Lake Charles. We're going all around the state. So if you know of a veteran you think may be able to help, we may be able to help them, let us know. Uh, I'm so proud of the team working with our veterans to do this. It's having, <coughs> excuse me, incredible response and we're helping a lot of veterans. Now, now this is my favorite. I ask everyone, everywhere I go in Louisiana, to take one vacation. You normally leave Louisiana, go see a part of Louisiana you haven't been to before. I promise you won't be disappointed. Now, I got up in front of five high school kids, gave my little dog and pony show, and at the end I said, okay, any questions? Little girl in the front row. 
So, Lieutenant Governor, where are you going on your staycation? Man, she got me. I froze. I had to think quick. I said, Toledo, Ben, and Natchitoches. She said, okay. I went home that night and told my wife, look, the week before Christmas, we're not doing anything. Why don't we go to Toledo, Ben, and Natchitoches? She said, why there? I said, I couldn't think of nothing else. But I wasn't going to lie to that little girl. We went to Toledo, Ben. We caught a lot of fish. They fry them up in that resort. And then we went to, uh, to Natchitoches for the Christmas lights. And if you've ever been to the hardware store there, my mother-in-law spent three hours in there and a lot of money. They got every game for when you were a kid. Well, when she went over and put it on social media, 20 of their relatives from Houston have now gone to Natchitoches to go to that hardware store. So I am a great example that if you go somewhere and you share it with your friends and family, uh, it will work and it'll help drive people in the communities that we will never have the money to promote so staycation in Louisiana. And when you do, you need to sign up as an ambassador. Now this year, we have knocked it out the park. Two years ago, Lauren Daigle, we gave her a little money to travel the country and promote Louisiana at our concerts. She's now a multi-Grammy winner. She's got an international tour, and she'll be showing our videos at our concerts and talking about Louisiana, and now has over two million followers, and she tweets about swimming with the alligators in the Chafalaya Basin and all kind of crazy stuff, but she has become a great ambassador. We also, if you didn't know it, we have a rugby team on the West Bank, and they wear the jersey, Louisiana Feed Your Soul. And although it doesn't get a lot of press in the sports page here, they are in the top two for the championship this year, a couple games less, and that jersey has been all over Europe in all the papers, a high great the first year the rugby team in Louisiana is doing. And then our, our fisherman here who's been in the top 20, he's got his boat wrapped and whenever he holds up a bass, you see that shirt, most of the time that bass is not caught in Louisiana, but we don't tell anybody. <laughs> we spread that picture around the world and they think he caught it in Louisiana. And, um, but those are three great ambassadors and we're looking for more opportunities to help some young entrepreneurs, singers, whatever it is with their career and we can give them a little money for travel and help them become known and promote our great state. So you too can sign up and you get a little patch and if you keep posting pictures, we'll share them with the world because nobody can tell that story better than you can. Now for Mardi Gras, we got some videos we couldn't use, so don't send us any of those. <laughs> but this has really helped us by you telling us about that special place to go and things to do and then we share them with the, it'll drive people into your community to go to that restaurant, to that shop, to that museum, to that park. And I tell you, uh, one example of how well it's working is the Gothic jail in Doretta. That's a ghost on the window, in the window and uh, on the porch. I know, I don't know if the ghost is real. The lady swears by it. But since we posted this picture, 4,000 people have gone to Doretta to look for that ghost. So if you got a ghost, you post it and they will come. <laughs> Go ahead. So last year we decided it was time to rebrand Louisiana. If you remember, the brand was Pick Your Passion. And Jay Darden came up with that. We stayed with it for a couple years for two reasons. One is people in Louisiana are passionate, so it fit us. The second reason is Jay still has to approve my budget and I didn't want to make him mad. But it was time to change it. And I thought we didn't need to make a decision with a small group. We needed to let the data run what is the best way to brand Louisiana. So we looked around the country and we found Michigan, pure Michigan, put that state on the map. Double digit increase in tourism when they came up with pure Michigan. There's actually pure Michigan water, coffee. It has really identified that state. So we hired that guy. And he went around the country and did focus groups throughout America and into Canada and asked people, what does Louisiana mean to you? Mardi Gras, crawfish, fun, music. All those things were put up. They went back with six slogans and 100% of each group picked Louisiana Feed Your Soul. You can feed it with music, with food, with fishing, and it just gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling, kind of like the way we treat visitors. We treat strangers like they're family. So we went with it. Now we didn't have 40 million like Michigan to roll it out. So thanks to our great tourism folks from around the state, around the state, 
we went to all these cities and we showed we fed people so we wrapped a food truck now i wasn't too smart i picked washington dc and it was 10 degrees that day <laughs> but um but we fed them king cake we got millions of dollars in free publicity through social media and unveiled it and um, i'm going to close with a short video uh, how we feed our soul this brand won a national award out of 18 in the world uh, several months ago in New York, Louisiana was picked out of eight, one of 18 in the world for best brand. So it's doing Louisiana well. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Keep talking. Mention Louisiana and images of Mardi Gras, jazz clubs, and late night revelry are most likely the first things that come to mind. But there is far more to Louisiana than the Crescent City. And likewise, New Orleans is much more than the French Quarter and Fat Tuesday. Louisiana is a land of contrasts. Its different regions vary in physical appearance, from gentle rolling hills and lakes in the north to bayou swamps and the Gulf of Mexico in the south. Perhaps there is no better example of contrast than Louisiana's culture. Here, the American South meets French heritage. The result, a genteel Southern pace enveloped by a zest for life. And it's that pursuit of enjoyment that threads throughout Louisiana. Dancing to Zydeco in a local music hall. Spicy boiled crawfish and the dare of how hot. Casting a reel and hooking a fat bass. Flying through a sea of grass on an airboat. The uneasy and mysterious thrill of touring a haunted antebellum home at night. The sound of jazz, blues, and soul drifting from back alleys and open doors. And yes, the craziest party in America, perhaps even the world. Louisiana isn't for spectators, it's for participants. For those that want to feed their soul and not only live the moment, but to become the moment. Here, excitement is a constant pursuit and one that's easily found. Louisiana, feed your soul. Oh, I want to thank everyone for coming today. Thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, for letting us know what your office is up to. We always enjoy having you here. I want to thank uh, Crave, Araby Food Store, and the Coffee House for catering. I want to thank the, to the Office of Tourism for partnering with us for this breakfast. Uh, Y'all do, do such a great job, and thank you for what you do for the parish. And I want to thank Maureen Layuza with the uh, Civic Center for helping us with uh, making everything look beautiful today. So everyone have a great day. Thank you for coming.